I don't draw them. I don't, you know, sketch them out or have a concept and build from the concept. It's basically built in my head. You know, I, I live it, I dream about it. Everything, every moment of the day is built around that motorcycle. I guess what, what really separates me from a lot of in this, a lot of people in this industry is, is I personally build the motorcycles. I'm the only one that touches them. It's just my hands. It kind of gives the industry a bad name sometimes, you know, when people spend a lot of money and the bikes break down or they're just not built well. You know, I see a lot of that stuff in this industry now where, you know, they, they might have an idea and they, they pay their $10 an hour guy to do it and it, the industry fills up with garbage, stuff that's not engineered. I mean, you have to be able to build a motorcycle and be able to ride it too and function and, and uh, rather than just be an art piece. You know, it's somebody's life. You know, it's not like a car where they're in a box. You know, on a motorcycle, if, you know, they forget to tighten something or something comes loose, it could be catastrophic. So, but my, that's always been my philosophy is just rather than trusting that somebody else is going to do it, I always just did it myself. This one's called the Vinny. Um, I built this, I believe, in 2005, finished it in 2006 for one of the build offs. I've always had a fascination with Vincent's. I first heard about him from my grandfather who was, uh, used to drive tanks in World War II. His battalion stole one and he used to keep it on his tank and he used to tell me about this Vincent motorcycle that they had that they used to, you know, have a few drinks and buzz around and the MPs at the time only had Jeeps that did 20 and the Vincent just did 100 plus. You know, they're a collector's bike, not many of them left. So when I decided to build one, I uh, went went to great strides to build it for the people who knew what a Vincent was. So I had the engine actually copied. You know, I had the cases made, and I had a a very famous Vincent uh, engine builder help me with the engine. But we made it electric start and fuel injected and all modern internals, but it still has the look of a, of a 1950s Vincent. You know, I had the tires made. This was the first 26 and the first 20, so the rim hoops were machined out of solid chunks by uh, metal sport wheels. And every single part on it was made by hand, or it's a one-off of some sort. But, you know, I built it, like I said, for the people who owned Vincent's, and uh, a lot of the guys from the, the the VOC, the Vincent Owners Club, got to see it. You know, the average age of them is 60 plus, and uh, they really got a kick out of it. You know, they really respected the bike, and uh, because they understood and understand what a Vincent is, and they knew that I went to great troubles not to chop up a an original one. Um, that was kind of it for me when when those old guys saw the Vincent and a smile came on their face rather than a frown. When I was younger, it was more the bikes, you know. I would build the bikes, and the bikes were famous, and people really didn't know who Matt Hotch was. But after the TV show, everybody knew Matt Hotch was, and they kind of knew the bikes. So, you know, you get famous, you're on TV, you have people coming in always wanting you, an autograph, you have to travel. You take advantage of your fame and kind of commercialize yourself to a point, but then your life at home, your family is sacrificed. You know, I used to enjoy riding an awful lot. My, my wife and I used to tour, so I didn't really bar hop. I wasn't a real bar hopper. I didn't really like the attention that much. So, so my wife would fly out to Sturgis, and you know, after I was done working, we'd take two to three weeks to come home and 
see the national parks in the Midwest, and beautiful parts of the country, great riding, two-lane roads, nobody out there. But riding around nowadays with the text messaging and the smartphones and, you know, it's, it's pretty dangerous on the freeways out here. I think my son was about one, I think, and I almost got hit. And so I, I kind of sold my bike that back then and decided to make the transition into uh, spending more time with my family. I think what did it for me was when I came home and my son, he was about two, he took a, uh, a crescent wrench and took his training wheels off his bicycle and uh, all himself and took off riding. I said from that point on that regardless of my pursuit of money that I was going to see my kids grow up. I kind of took a break from bike building for about six years and, and uh, dedicated my time to raising my family. But now that they're kind of in school and kind of off on their own a little bit, I'm uh, kind of starting to get that back. It's kind of a little bit hard, you know, when, you know, when you get home from work and you know, your kids want to go to the park or they want to go here or they want help with their homework and stuff like that so it's a little more time consuming to find the time to actually dedicate thinking about that particular motorcycle for that long. Where I see myself going in the future is is kind of stay, staying small again um, doing a few shows a year, not many, but the ones that are local that I'll do, I usually take my son. So he, he's actually really enjoying that part of it. Um, you know, I have a couple customers now that are, you know, that I've been reaching out to that have tried to have me build bikes in the past, but I was uh, kind of semi-retired, I guess you could call it. But a lot of them understand the quality and they're willing to wait for it. So I'm starting to build a few motorcycles now and I still see myself doing it because it is my passion. My name is Matt Hotch. I own Matt Hotch Designs in Fullerton, California.